So Nahida has asked me to write about, to give a short video about how can we be mentally strong so we can adapt to COVID? How can we maintain mental health during social isolation? How can we overcome mental stress and anxiety? And how can we change our perspectives? Um, it just turns out that I was teaching a class on philosophical psychology this semester. And um, the ancient view focuses on strength of mind. And it also really um, focuses on getting the right idea. Like you need to get the right idea. It's not as if um, the right idea will necessarily fix you. There's no silver bullet. Um, but in a lot of ways, that's an indication that that's the wrong idea. So we talked about a lot of ideas people have had about psychological health. Um, and uh, Immanuel Kant had a dualistic idea and the utilitarians were reductionistic. And then there's Augustine and all these things. Um, but I started the students out with a model that I call classical humanism that has worked for me. And so I would just like to suggest that um, the best way to cope with reality is to describe it and understand it and work your way through it. Um, and then figure out, okay, given the situation, what are my options and what would be best? And then how do I move forward? So um, so the first point I wanted to make was that the sisters, students who I call sisters at AUW on a scale of which colleges and universities or which uh, individuals in the whole world um, might experience more stress than others. I guess I would say among college students, um, AUW students would qualify as being in, in circumstances that would truly increase their stress. So I think it's important to, to point that out, partly so that you don't blame yourself you don't take responsibility for things that you're not responsible for. Um, I know a number of students who were forced to get married or forced to have a child. I mean, the conditions that some of the students live under are just incredible. There's uh, the ones in Afghanistan where the Taliban shuts down the electricity. There are students in Myanmar. All of you know this. It's just that I think to get a realistic idea, to ultimately be able to overcome the stress and develop strength of mind, first you have to just say, okay, this is the situation. Then I think the next thing is to look to your friends because studies long before COVID said the best way to deal with life is to have really good friends. And they would be friends that keep inspiring you, that will listen to you and acknowledge, you know, they don't ignore you or tell you in a superficial way to pull yourself out of it. They're very specific. They will go down into the particulars and you can have good conversations about what your situation is, and some outside person will let you think through the options and which one you think is best and why. So I think one of the main characteristics of a therapist is that they listen to you and they give you what positive self-regard 
they validate you. Um, I don't think there's any problem with AUW students. There are some pretty wicked people who don't need validation, but none of them are AUW students. Um, but I would say that a syndrome to avoid getting in is to just talk with other students about your stress, right? Because that just creates more stress. So uh, don't just talk about that. Don't talk about, you know, the professor complaining about a professor or uh, just trying to point a finger at some, some person or situation that's getting you, making it impossible for you. Don't do that. <laughs> just make sure to be honest about your situation. Maybe you prioritize which things are harder than others. Um, you have to ask yourself, is there anything I did to bring on this situation? Am I making it worse in any way? Um, and then I think you want to think, and I do think you want to get together with your AUW sisters or your family and envision a, a better life, right? Sort of, I know this, it's not pie in the sky if you really um, make a judgment about it. So I had, a, my students have been writing letters to themselves because we did an article where Seneca wrote a letter to his friend Serenus. Serenus was depressed and stressed. And um, Seneca is giving him advice based on this classical model of flourishing. So how he could, he could move out of the situation he's in and once again, begin to flourish as a human being. And so uh, my students, a number of them wrote letters modeling that letter and definitely next time I teach the class, I will use their letters because it's very important to me that you each of you understands your sisters at AUW are incredible heroines. They're heroes. They have overcome immense obstacles. And so just take a step back instead of, you know, <laughs> complaining and stress, take a step back and not only validate each other, affirm each other, and then inspire each other. Say, okay, what do I want to be moving forward? It, when this is over, if I'm going for an interview, I'm applying for a job, they are going to ask you, how did you handle COVID? So what do you want to be able to say? <laughs> in that interview or in that application letter, because that anybody who's looking to hire people or to um, accept them into a graduate school program is going to want to know how these people handled COVID because it's a character test. It will be a very good model for how they're gonna handle moving to another country, having to adapt to a new situation. So I do think you want to think just in terms of your own self moving forward, that you, you can use this as a model for how you want to keep going. You've already done this before in a lot of ways, I'm sure. So you can remind yourself and remind each other. There were a number of letters that said at first, I, I, the world was just coming in at me. And this is a classic uh, Greek tragedy is about pathos. Uh, and that's what it means, pathetic. You just think the world is coming after you and, and you're passive, you can't. You're just reacting, you're not acting. And then the two ways out of that are eros and thanatos. I mean, you can just get mad and just violence is the ultimate. But I mean, in general, just overreacting, high-spirited, 
I was being either angry or afraid. That's the negative. Okay, the other way is creative, eros. So what kind of person do I want to be? Um, so this one uh, student said that she started volunteering or she, her family got closer, right? Because they all decided together that that's what they were going to do. So it can help you be extremely aware, self-consciously aware that you have the power of choice and you really are creating your life. So you are doing that anyway, but this makes it absolutely clear that you are the creator of your life. And um, you can use, you know, references, you can think of examples, you can quote from texts that mean a lot to you, but I think ultimately you make your decision. But I, I do think if you can find some good friends that you inspire each other, you admire each other, you work through an issue with each other, or you um, acknowledge, uh, you feel for a person as they struggle. You just constantly try to find creative ways to um, do what's best in the situation. And you keep thinking of, what do I ultimately want in life? Well, ultimately, you want to, to find out what really satisfies you, what you like to do that really makes you happy, and also that you think you're contributing to the well-being of other people. Um, that's what you want to find. But on the way to that, this daily creative activity of deciding what do I want? What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of friend do I want to be? Um, but you have to envision it. You have to, what is flourishing? How can I flourish in this situation? And I do want to say that I've had some obstacles in the past, which were kind of surprising because I really wanted to help other people. And it took me like decades before I even got on my feet. I kept saying, I'm just trying to help people and I can't even, I don't know where the next, uh, you know, how to pay the next, the bills. So that took me a while until I was 50 before I really knew <laughs> that I could get my bills paid. Um, but, it gives you resilience, right? Other things aren't that important. My father had a lot of serious life-threatening issues and he never complained. That's why I was kind of naive when I found out, oh, life is kind of difficult. Um, but if you can um, keep moving forward and um, just know that you're constantly creating something and that you could, you're setting an example for other people. And in every way, it, apart from just what job you have or what graduate school you're in, just your way of life always involves trying to put yourself in certain situations or trying to create a better culture and then running into obstacles, dealing with the obstacles, um, so AUW was set up for, for the students to be part of literally the creation of a new level of human culture <clears throat> where women are flourishing to a degree they have never flourished before. So before COVID, I kept telling the students that. Um, but, you know, after COVID, during COVID, if they could just be aware of that and bond together and have a sisterhood, because <clears throat> when you, one way to oppress people is to get them to pick on each other and criticize each other and compete against each other. So that was a big issue before COVID. During COVID, I think the issue is to just commiserate about how awful it is and just sort of validate each other's passivity. So 
I, if you could just agree that the friendship is going to be based on um, creativity, trying to figure out without simplifying, just is there a creative way out of this? Is there a step where you have to vision what kind of person do I want to be? And then um, five years from now, looking back, how am I going to be able to tell the story of my life that will make me really proud of myself? Plus, I can explain that to other people. I can explain it to my children <clears throat> or my nieces and nephews or to other people. You just create this whole new level of culture and social interaction. And um, instead of feeling isolated, you connect with some friends and hang out with them on Zoom. Um, uh, it's easy for a person to solve other people's problems, I understand. So I, I admire students, honestly, and I tell them that I'm not trying, <laughs> I'm not giving the advice because they're in situations I never imagined, but I just tell them I admire them. And it's, I feel like it's my role to do that because COVID, believe it or not, has been the best thing that's ever happened to me for a lot of reasons, which I don't wanna go into. But the main point is that if a student just wants to talk to me and, and have an ear, somebody who listens and just admires them, that's the main thing is to admire. And then if they can work together to find some creative way to move forward, always thinking five years from now, looking back, what do I want to have chosen where I can say, yeah, that was amazing. I did a good thing. Like, I could do this. <laughs> uh, just being aware of how creative, how much, how the degree to which it's possible to overcome obstacles and create an incredibly beautiful life, a beautiful life. And um, so that would be my advice for whatever it's worth. Um, and I'm thankful for Nahida to get asked to do this because it's an honor. I just hope I've helped.